Okay, y'all, I am really excited about today's video because this week we're gonna talk about one of my all-time favorite topics. As long-term travelers, we have lots of data and information that we are trying to manage and keep track of. And one of my favorite ways to do so is the Humble Spreadsheet. Now I have created a lot of different spreadsheets that I use in my travels for different reasons. A couple of them I've already shared with you. But today we are gonna talk about an accommodation comparison spreadsheet. Right. I wanna look at multiple different places to be able to find the best place I can find. I'm a slow traveler, I know what my needs are, I know what my wants are, and so I wanna take a look at all of that information in a way that is easy to decipher and end up with the best option that I have. So today I'm gonna to walk you through my spreadsheet. Uh, I will put a link in the description below the video if you'd like to get your own free copy. Now just one note, this spreadsheet was built in Google Sheets. So you will need to have a Google account in order to access it, either like a Gmail or a YouTube account. And then once you click the link after you're logged in, it'll just give you an option to make your own copy and then you can play around. And then maybe you're gonna to wanna to come through with me so you can see exactly how I designed it. There are a few customizable fields uh, and you can see exactly how I use it. One of the best things about spreadsheets is that they are customizable. The copy I'm giving you is not locked. You'll be able to change whatever you want to make sure that you are tracking the things that are most important to you. So if you are looking for a solution that is going to help you wade through all of your accommodation options, you are in the right place. Come on with me, let's dig into the spreadsheet and see how it works. All right, so here we are at the spreadsheet. As you can see, there is a lot of information here that I'm going to show you exactly how I use it. And so we're just gonna take a fake example here from an Airbnb and use that information to kind of fill everything out so you can see how it works. So the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is I've got another window here for Airbnb. And we're just gonna take this example to fill in our fields. So for name, I just wanna get the name of the Airbnb. You can call it whatever you want. I just like to copy and paste the actual name of the location. It just helps me keep track of it a little bit better. And then once we have that, that's just gonna drive me crazy, so I'm gonna unbold it. The next thing I like to do, because when I'm going back later and actually looking at this, I don't wanna to have to search for it. So what I do, this is a little trick. You're just gonna double click here and you're gonna come down to insert link. And it brings you a field where you can actually make a hyperlink right here. So I'm gonna come back to my Airbnb page. I'm just gonna copy that link. And then I'm gonna come here and paste it in. Hit apply. And now my link here is actually a hyperlink. And anytime I come back, I can just click on this and it's going to open up that link again for me. So that's just a time saving, makes it a whole lot easier. Next, we have platform. Now platform, you'll see this little arrow right here. And that is because this is a drop down box. So I'm gonna show you how to set this up, but basically I went through and I filled in, I put in Airbnb, booking.com, hotels.com, Agoda, or a direct book if I was booking directly from the owner. And that way I can just keep track of what platform I'm working with. In this case, I'm gonna click Airbnb, but just so you can see how this works. So, if you, so you can see we have all of our different fields here. We've got, this is a drop down, and then coming up over here, we do have several more fields that are also drop down. So if you come down to customize here tab, you will see most of the fields are just gonna be type in as you go. So those are ones are grayed out, but these white ones are ones that whatever you type here under site, I typed in those five places, but if you wanted to put in, let's say Expedia, I wouldn't recommend that necessarily for booking, but you could maybe use that. And then we go back to template. And if I look at our thing now, Expedia has also been added to the list. So these are the ones I put in. You can put whatever you want there, wherever you like to book your accommodation from, and then it'll be right there. The exact same process will hold true for these options over here, but we'll get to those in a second. Um, the third column says Nix. I'm gonna ignore that for one second. We're gonna come back to that one at the end. So now we wanna put in our price. I'm not gonna tediously take you through every single option. If we're gonna stay there a month, let's just say that the booking was $1,200. You could put whatever that price is. 
Um, cancellation date. This is very important to me as a slow traveler because I want to know at what point can I not cancel that booking anymore. So remembering what that date is rather than having it being lost in an email somewhere, I want to have it right here where I'm actually booking it. So I will put that in. Now with an Airbnb, it might be non-refundable at all once you book it, or there might be a date. You might be able to cancel it up until the day before. Whatever that date is, you're just going to want to put that in here. I'll just put August 1st, 2024. Reviews. Now, I like to keep track of reviews because, you know, those are going to make a difference, especially remember, we're comparing this. We're going to put in, you know, five, 10, however many places you like to compare. And so you want to be able to see what it was. So if I come back to the listing here and I can see this place has a 4.95 average review, which is excellent, and it has 62 reviews. Now, this I like to pay attention to as well, because if it has 10 reviews, or if it has 1,200 reviews, like that might make a difference as for the overall rating. Um, so I like to keep track. So this is 4.95 and 62. So the way I do this is I put 4.95, and then I will also put, um, I already forgot what the number was, 62. And so I know this has a 4.95 star rating and it has 62 reviews. And whether you're on booking.com or any other platform, they might have a different star system. It might be one to 10, you know, they might do it differently, but uh, I just put whatever it is here so I can compare that across. Location. The way I use this field is that, you know, when you're looking at a city, they're not all the places you're looking at aren't going to be in the exact same place. So you want to be able to just quickly look and see, are they in the old town? You know, depending on what city you're looking at, are there different neighborhoods and you're trying to keep track of which neighborhood you want to stay in? Or maybe it's a small place and, you know, you're just going off of like the main square and this place is to the north and the next place is to the south and the next place is to the southeast. However you want to do this, we end up putting different things in here, uh, depending on what makes sense for that city, but just some way of remember where it is when we're comparing them to each other. So with this one, we'll just say it is to the northeast of downtown, which this option is in Saranda, which northeast of downtown doesn't really make sense, but this is just a practice. Host. Now, the way I use this field is that, especially with Airbnb, there's a difference sometimes between getting a regular host or a super host. Now, further, there can be a difference if you have a host, you know, just like a person who might also live in the house or nearby that's giving it to you, as opposed to a management company. I like keeping track of that. So here I would put, you know, if this is a super host or if it is a management company, I would put that here. So again, I can just compare that across. Check in. This is something that is very important to me. It might not be so much for you, it just depends, but I like knowing how I'm going to deal with that check-in process. Is there gonna be reception that I'm just going to a desk and they're gonna let me in whenever I get there, like at a hotel? Or if it's an Airbnb, do I have to meet the host? Do I have to, you know, a week ahead of time say, hey, I'm gonna be there at, you know, six o'clock at night or 10 o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the morning. So they have to be there to meet me. Or what I'm seeing more and more with a lot of Airbnbs is they have like a keypad entry or a locked key somewhere so you can do self check-in. I really like that option because it just releases me from the strain of I'm at the airport and I'm trying to find a taxi and I told my host I was going to be there in 45 minutes and I've got to get there in time. That just makes my brain crazy. I don't like it. So knowing how I'm going to check in, very important to me. So again, I just made the drop down. So this is check in just to show you again, we come to customize here. Here's the check-in field and you can type in whatever you want here. What, you know, there might be other options that I didn't think about right now. Um, you can put in whatever you want. They would all show up in this drop down. In this case, I'm just going to say this one is a self check-in because the key is there and you just put in the code. 
I'm going to scroll this over a little bit to make it easier. The next one is air conditioning. This is another drop down field. The list that I used was yes, it has air conditioning, which is good to know, or no, it doesn't because there are a lot of places that don't. Bedroom only I put because there are a lot of places I have stayed where there is an air conditioning unit in the bedroom, but not out in the living space. So if you know that information, I'd like to put it here. Fan only. I will put this if you know there's not an air conditioning, but someone has mentioned that there is a fan because you don't always get that information. But if I do, I'm going to put it in here. Unknown. Sometimes you just don't know and you're making an educated guess based on the comments from other reviewers or something. So I'll put unknown. Again, this is a drop down field. You can come here and add in whatever options that you want that are going to show up here for you. Next is bedrooms. Now this is important for us. We are frequently traveling with my mother, so we are looking for two bedroom, two bath places. And when we're looking at places, you know, you have different options. So it might be a studio, it might be a one bedroom, two bedroom. We have gotten places that had three bedrooms. So I like having those options here listed so I can use it to compare. Again, drop down, you can put in whatever you want. And then the next one is bed size. This is very important to me. You know, we are a couple. I do not like double beds. I like having a little more room to stretch. So I put on here what our bed side is. If we've got a double, a queen, a king, or unknown, because there's so many places that just call it a double bed, meaning double bed for two people. That doesn't refer to the actual size of the bed. It's one of my biggest pet peeves with online accommodation information. Again, this is a drop down field. So if you had a different option, if you wanted to put, you know, that it's a futon or you're sleeping on a couch bed or whatever, you could add in any of that there. Okay. I think that's the end of our drop down boxes. Now we have kitchen. I like leaving notes on kitchen. Kitchens are very important for us. We do a lot of cooking at home. And so I want to know what that kitchen is like. Does it have an oven? Does it have a full size or a mini fridge? Does it have, you know, a microwave? Does it have a blender or a toaster? Any information I have that I can get from that listing, I'm going to put here just so I can keep track. Next is couch. Again, this is very important for us. It might not be for you, but we really like having a couch. I like having a workspace, so I usually like being at a table. David likes sitting on a couch. He's just more comfortable there. We really like to make sure we have both. Next is dining room table. Like I said, I like to use that as a workspace, but also it's nice to have a place to eat dinner together. So I put that here. Balcony and view. So I love having a balcony. There's just something about being able to go outside and, you know, still being in your house, but getting some fresh air, seeing the outside, seeing the sky, feeling the wind on your face. I love balconies. So if there is a balcony, I'm going to notate it. Same with having a view. There are some places, even if it's just a window, it might have a really beautiful view. And to me, that is very important. And so I like noting it so I can keep track. Next, we have two that are for bathroom. Now, this might not be something that is important for you. Maybe it is, but I put bath number here because, you know, especially when my mom is traveling with me, we like to make sure we have two bathrooms in a place. Sometimes there are places that'll have one and a half bath. Many places only have one bath. Um, I like to notate that so I can keep track. And then also for a bath, I like to keep track if it is a wet bath or a dry bath. So most of the times in you know, North America, you're gonna be in a shower, there's gonna be a door, there's gonna be a curtain, something that separates the shower from the rest of the room. But in many places in Asia or South America, we've even had one here in Europe, where it's a wet bath and you've got your shower and there is no curtain, there is no separation. And when you take a shower, the whole bathroom kind of gets wet. It is manageable and we've gotten used to it when we needed to, but it is something I like to know because if I've got two places that are neck and neck and one has a dry bath and one has a wet bath, I'm probably gonna prefer the one with the dry bath. I mean, not probably, I definitely will. So I like to notate that on my spreadsheet. All right, next we have pool. This might just be saying, yes, the property has a pool, which is going to be a park. But if you know any other information about it, is it an indoor or an outdoor pool? Is it heated or not? Does it have a spa or a jacuzzi? Any information I know about that pool, I'm gonna put here just to keep track. 
Laundry facilities, is there a washer on site? Is there a washer and a dryer? Most places around the world do not have dryers, but we have had them um, on occasion. You know, maybe it's a hotel and they have a self-service laundry or they offer paid laundry. Whatever information I have is gonna go there. Breakfast, is breakfast included? Is it free? Does it come with a fee? You know, can you pay extra to get it? Is there times associated with when you have to go get the breakfast? Anything I know about breakfast, going here. Parking, we do not drive or very rarely will we, so this is not something I use, uh, but if you are someone that has a car or wants to get a rental car, it's a good to know where you've got parking, if you've got parking on site, if you need to do parking on the street, if it's free, if you're gonna have to pay for it, if there's certain days you can't park where you're supposed to park, is there a garage, like all of that information, you can put it right here. Airport shuttle, this is probably gonna be more specific to hotels, although there are some Airbnb hosts that will offer you know, pickups from airports. So if you have that information and there's anything to put there, you can put it here. So Netflix, cable TV, pretty straightforward. If you know that they have Netflix or a Netflix you can sign into or their own account or whatever it might be, you can put that information here. Gym, if there's a gym on site or that they have a deal with or whatever, you might wanna put that information here. Dishwasher, so this is not one I use. I added this on at the very last second last night, but I know there are people out there, I've talked to some of you, who really love having a dishwasher, so I threw it on here. And then finally we have comments. And this is just for anything else that didn't get covered where you could put in what you thought about it, if there's any special circumstances or prices or any other special considerations that you might wanna notate. Comments is just the generic place to put it. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, I encourage you to do that. I have some other spreadsheets that I work with that eventually we're gonna share as well on the channel. Uh, so make sure you're subscribed so you can be around when those come out. So what happens with this is then once you fill this all out and you've got your 10 or 15 places, now it becomes, rather than just thinking, oh my gosh, I'm looking at 10 different places, how am I ever gonna decide? You can come right here and go across and you can compare them. And you can see, oh, well, you know, these ones are the most expensive ones and these ones are the cheaper ones. And these are the ones you know, that have two bedrooms and these are the ones that are a studio. And these are the ones that have a you know, heated pool and this is the one that doesn't have a pool. And it becomes much easier to compare because you've got hard, cold facts looking right back from you from the spreadsheet so you can use that information to help you decide. Now, what still does get hard, and this is what I have found as we use the spreadsheet, is that when you're looking at all 10, you're like, which one should we get rid of? And it can be really hard. So my advice is to take two. To take the top two, take the least expensive two, take the most expensive two, take the two that both have free breakfast included, just pick two and then say, if these were the last two on this list, which one would I wanna stay at? And then you can eliminate one and then pick two different ones and say, okay, I have these two. That works really well for me rather than trying to do it all at once, which is just you know too much for your brain to handle. But if you narrow it down to two, you can usually pick a winner and just keep doing that until you're done. And then once you've eliminated one, you're gonna come back to the spreadsheet and you're gonna to go to this little Nix column. And that's what Nix means. Nix was just the shortest word I could come up with that meant get rid of it. And so when you click this checkbox, the spreadsheet is formatted that it's just going to gray out that entire line. Technically that's not gray, I think that's like a navy blue, but you know what I mean. It's just going to gray it out so you can eliminate that option and then you can just keep going through all of your options until you get to the one that is going to be the winner. So this spreadsheet has worked really, really well for us. And if it seems like it's very simple, it's because it is very simple. It's just about getting all that information instead of just trying to hold it all in your head and keep track of all these details. You get it down in black and white, and then you can just look at it and decide. This accommodation has more things that are important to me than this one does. And just slowly keep eliminating the ones that aren't as good until you get to the best option that you have. Now, if this looks amazing to you and you just wanna go get your spreadsheet and start using it as is, be my guest, I hope you find it very helpful. If you would like to manipulate it a little bit more, I will show you a couple of tricks uh, just so that you can you know, customize this perhaps a little bit more for yourself. So if you wanted to change some things, it's pretty easy. Like if you say you know, number of baths is not a question that is important for you, 
you can just come right here and delete the entire column and then it's just gone and you don't have to worry about that field anymore. This is kind of wide. If you wanted to just get rid of some, you could do that. But let's say instead of getting rid of it, you wanted to have another column there. I'm just gonna hit Control Z and bring back that. But you had a different question. Let's say, you know, you travel with a pet and you wanna know, is this place pet friendly? You could just come here to bath number and retype pet friendly. And now you can use that column to keep track of that instead, if that's something that's important for you. And so any of these columns, you can change the names, you can change the order, um, you can remove, you could add if you wanted to add in another field. I mean, you just come to any one of them and go, you know, insert one column to the right or left. And now you've got an extra column there that you could add in and call whatever you wanted to call it. So I do wanna show you just one little trick. It's a little bit complicated if you're not used to spreadsheets, but I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to do it. But it's, for me, I really like having the drop-down boxes. When I'm filling this spreadsheet out for 10 or 15 different places, anything that will save me a couple of seconds so I don't have to go in and type stuff in, if I can just hit a drop-down box, it's just faster for me, so I really like that. Now, to create that for, this spreadsheet for all of you got a little bit complicated because we're all gonna want slightly different things, but I wanna show you how to do it in case there are some that you wanna add back in. So I don't know, let's just go back to pet friendly here. So let's say that the options you're looking for in a pet friendly place is that yes, they allow pets, no, they don't allow pets, or yes, they allow it, but only with a fee. You have to pay a little bit extra to let have the pets in. So rather than having to type that in in every place, if we wanna create a drop-down box for this, so I'm gonna click in my box here and then I'm gonna come up to data and I'm gonna go down to where it says data validation. Now this is showing me all of the other validation rules I've already created for this, but we wanna create a new one. So we're gonna come down here and go to add rule and the first thing it's gonna to apply to range. So where do we want this rule? We wanna do this entire column. So I'm gonna hit this little box over here where it says select data range. And then I'm gonna move it over just so you can see. And I'm gonna select this first box and I'm just gonna scroll down to the bottom here. So it's got template, which is the name of our template and then Q3, which is we're in column Q, row three, all the way down to Q23. Does that make sense? I'm gonna hit okay. So now you can see it's highlighted. It knows we're gonna be putting in a dropdown. So it's got the little thing here showing us that that's what's coming. We're gonna change that to match the other ones. And then criteria. So this is where we want to, where do we wanna pull those that list from. And because we've got the customize here, so we're gonna come here. Now remember we changed bath number to pet friendly. So I'm just gonna come here and I'm gonna change bath number to pet friendly. So it matches. You really don't have to go in the same order. Wherever you pull it from is gonna be fine. But And then for our drop down, I'm gonna change this and I'm gonna change it to drop down from a range. And then again, I get this little box where we're gonna select our data range. And here we're gonna select it from customize here. I'm gonna select that and go down to the bottom. So now the data range for the items that are gonna be in your drop-down box come from the customize here tab from P, we're in column P, number three, all the way down to P24. And hit okay. So now we can come here to pet friendly and we'll say, yes, they allow pets. No, they do not allow pets or there is a fee. And now if we come back over here, you can see we've got our three options that we could use, whichever one we wanted. Now, the default format is this little chip design, which I think is really ugly. <laughs> so we're gonna come down here to advanced options and we've got a couple more options we want to look at. So if the data is invalid, do you want it to show a warning or reject the input? This is just personal preference of how you like it. Uh, what reject the input means is that it only lets you pick yes, no, or fee. 
If you wanted to type something else in there, the system wouldn't let you. I usually change this to show a warning, and that way if there's some weird situation where I still wanted to type something in, I could. Um, I'll show you what that, and so if I said yes, but it is expensive. It'll let me put that in there, but you can see it's just got this little red mark over here. Um, and if I hover over it, it shows me that it's, there's a warning, but it lets me do it. But if I go back here, change that to yes, and change it to reject the input, then if I try and type something else in, you can see it gives me a warning that it doesn't allow me to do that and it just takes it away. So I usually change that to show a warning just so I, it gives me a little bit of flexibility. And then down here we've got display style. So you can see it's on this chip. I don't like that. I usually will change it to arrow. That way there's the arrow there that you can see. You can also put it on plain text so it doesn't show up at all. And But then if you click in that cell, it'll still give you your options. To me, I like having the visual that there are options there to drop down, so I always put it on arrow. And then once you fill that all out, you just hit done. Your new uh, rule will show up here. And now you've got that section that you can use. I create drop downs for a lot of my options because I know specifically what I'm looking for for all of these. If you want to do that, I invite you to do so. That's why I built the customized tab with all of the tabs on there, so it'd be very easy for you to do that. Um, like this one, it's grayed out just because I colored it gray because I didn't use it. But if you wanted to keep it, that uh, motif going, you can always just select all of those and then come up here to color. I put in just that gray color, but you can change it back to white. Any of the colors like that you can change. Another thing you might want to change, that, again, this is a very easy thing, it's just, you know, say, you know, you want to type in longer things somewhere. You can always grab this and make any of these um, fields bigger or smaller. Like I made this one very small because it's just a checkbox. But if you wanted the accommodation line to be bigger, you can make it as big as you want. The moral of the story here is that this is here for you to play with. You might like it as is, which is great, but if you wanna play around with it, you totally can. So you're not gonna hurt my feelings at all. Just make sure you have a spreadsheet that meets your needs and helps you answer these questions so that you can pick the best accommodations in the least amount of time. Now, those of you who are spreadsheet savvy will notice I have just made a terrible error and that I have come here to our template and I've been entering information on our template. You never want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this information and I'm going to do it wrong on purpose just so you see it. But I'm going to highlight all that and hit delete. And when I do that, you will notice that all the information went away, but so did my checkbox. If you ever do that by mistake, it's very simple. Just come to another checkbox, hit copy, and then go back up and paste it into the one that you accidentally deleted. There's other ways to add checkboxes and I just find that to be the quickest, easiest way. But what you're gonna to wanna to do to use this is I would leave this template always blank and then you're gonna to wanna to fill a new one out for every city that you go to. So when you get ready to come to your city, come down to the template here and you're just gonna come up to duplicate. Copy works as well, but duplicate's just faster. And then you've got copy of template and then I would just rename this. If you double click, you can rename it and you could call it Saranda or Chiang Mai or Sydney or wherever you are. That way your template stays clean and clear and you've always got that available to use without having to delete a whole bunch of extra stuff. I hope you've enjoyed this video and don't forget to go to the description below the video and click on the link to get your own free copy of this spreadsheet so that you can use it for yourself. Now I have released another free spreadsheet on how to tell if a repositioning cruise is affordable for you or not. If you are interested in that, I will put the link to that video right over here.